Weather forecasting is an incredibly complicated scientific process. What we do is we use the laws of physics that we know that govern the weather, and we take data uh, in order to uh, make those models run forward in time realistically to make the basis of our predictions around the globe. Tropical cyclone prediction is a big challenge. And with the development over the coastal area, our people need to have warning as early as possible. Cosmic 2 data represents a major advance for NOAA and for all users of radio occultation data. Cosmic 2 is a constellation of six satellites that orbit the Earth um, with an inclination of 24 degrees and an altitude of 520 kilometers. Um, they provide weather measurements and space weather measurements between 40 uh, north latitude and 40 south latitude. There are three uh, payloads or science instruments on COSMIC-2. The primary instrument that we're most focused on is, is called uh, a GPS radio occultation receiver. Um, th this is the receiver that measures the GPS satellite signals and, and we actually invert those signals to derive temperature and pressure. We feel really strongly that radio occultation data are maybe the best observing system for the lower troposphere and humidity um, in the atmosphere. So scientists can use these data to study the water cycle in the atmosphere. They can use these data to study atmospheric processes, uh, convection processes, planetary boundary layer processes. All these because RO provides very high vertical resolution measurements. And, and these are what you need to, do, to study these atmospheric processes. The COSMIC-2 Radio Occultation Data Center has two places. One of them is in Wyoming, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and the other one is right here at the Mesa Lab in Boulder. This is where we get all of our data from the six satellites for COSMIC-2. We get the data and then we process it it usually takes around five minutes where we process the data, and then we send it to our data users. Our most important data users is NOAA, ESPC, and then SWPSI and the Air Force 557. We usually get them the data usually five minutes after we have it, and then they also make it available to other users at data.cosmic.ucar.edu. Uh, the data is available in daily tarballs for both atmospheric and space weather products. Just like we experience weather on Earth, there's weather in space. And when those particles and, and this activity reaches Earth, it inter interacts with our Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere, including our power grids and our, our communication systems, our GPS navigation, uh, our airlines. And the measurements from COSMIC-2 are unprecedented the high density of measurements at low latitudes that we obtain from COSMIC-2 radio occultations uh, gives us an, an incredible picture of how the ionosphere is evolving to space weather. One of the applications we're most excited about radio occultation is actually to help monitor the Earth's climate. Radio occultation is driven by atomic oscillators on the GPS satellites. It's a, an extremely stable and repeatable system so we think once we get a long enough data record, we actually will be able to help monitor the Earth's global mean temperature very accurately.